Hello and welcome to the world of Pharma Leaders Research and Network 7 Media Group. Can healthcare innovations without access and reach to the common masses be called as innovation, where the real beneficiary of any research are the people, consumers, the common man? The tragedy in our setup is that while we have a fragmented market with a high degree of public and private healthcare setups, with as many as 29 states and 7 union territories throwing a bigger challenge. And that's not all. More than 80% of the healthcare expenses of the patient is out of their pockets. It has resulted in 63 million people facing poverty every year due to healthcare costs resulting from lack of financial protection. India's medical education system is one of the largest in the world. The 381 medical colleges in the country produce about 45,000 doctors annually. Pharma leaders believe that access to affordable, high-quality care is possible only if the care provided through public-private partnership was made sustainable. A healthcare strategy is truly sustainable when a certain set of conditions are met. Healthcare services of a certain standard reach intended beneficiaries. The private provider makes enough revenue to sustain him or herself and the state is able to purchase the services for the long term at a viable cost. India has a mixed health system with large number of private players. 80 to 85% of licensed physicians, 90% of hospitals and 80% of outpatient clinics in India operate within the private sector, either in whole or in part. We have a great opportunity to maximize the benefit from the strengths of the private sector by collaborating with it. Pharma leaders data reveal that our country needs about 600,000 more doctors. Doctor-patient ratio in India is the root of the problem. We need to build at least 100 times more medical colleges in India. It is time we start thinking about this sector from an economic point of view. More supply of doctors means more competition. That in turn means quality improvement and low cost. As long as we prevent a few big health insurance companies from taking over the entire sector and establishing a monopoly, we will remain in good shape. I think increasing MBBS seats is the first step to create healthy competition in this sector. Pharma leaders strongly believe that healthcare service delivery to India's poorest is the key to healthcare innovation. While the opportunity to enter the market is very ripe, India still spends only 4.2% of its national GDP towards healthcare goods and services, compared to 18% by the US. Additionally, there are wide gaps between the rural and urban populations in its healthcare system, which worsens the problem. A staggering 70% of the population still lives in rural areas and has none or limited access to hospitals and clinics. Consequently, the rural population mostly relies on alternative medicines, such as government programs in rural health clinics. One such government program is the National Urban Health Mission, which pays individuals for healthcare premiums in partnership with various local private partners which have unfortunately proven ineffective to date. In contrast, the urban centers have numerous private hospitals and clinics which provide quality health care. These centers have better doctors, access to preventive medicine and quality clinics which are a result of better profitability for investors compared to the not-so-profitable rural areas. This, to our mind, is the biggest danger. Pharma leaders feels that if India is to be a global player, it must look at its healthcare and get it in order. And malnutrition is the first one to look at. One in nine people on earth is currently undernourished. There are currently 795 million people hungry on earth. India itself is home to the largest undernourished and hungry population, with 195 million people going hungry every day. 
Close to 165 million children are stunted as a result of undernutrition and infection, leaving them physically and intellectually weak. According to the United Nations Children Fund, 24 countries with the highest level of stunted children are concentrated in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia alone. Nearly half of all deaths in children under the age of five are attributed to undernutrition. This translates into an unnecessary loss of about 3 million young lives a year. In India itself, 3,000 children die every day due to malnutrition. Pharma leaders feel that healthcare challenges in India at present are of different dimensions and more is required for the cleaning of the system at the helm who are responsible for formulating laws, rules and regulations. Pharma leaders believe that the evolving global and domestic market dynamics are likely to result in significant opportunities and challenges for pharma companies operating in India, both Indian companies as well as Indian affiliates of MNCs. Some key issue areas are already starting to capture the attention of leadership teams within the industry. Satya Brahma, while outlining the theme of Pharma Leaders' 8th Annual Pharma Leaders Meet, said that I am of the opinion that healthcare industry in India needs to work hand-in-hand -hand with its various stakeholders such as government, patients, consumers, doctors and chemists as the pace of growth in India is accelerating with Asia likely to overtake North America in terms of overall pharma sales. At the same time, we can't overlook the spotlight on the unbridled increase in prices of crucial medicines and patented drugs by Big Pharma and its significant impact around the world, forcing a debate on the greed of companies to pocket huge profits from something which is life-saving versus public health and societal good. The situation becomes grave for a poor country like India, where many are pushed into indebtedness due to spiraling healthcare costs absence of an efficient public health system and a sparsely penetrated health insurance cover. Patients have to cough up major medical expenses out of their own pockets for serious and chronic ailments. In India too, we face a similar situation with prices of medicines of cancer, HIV, hepatitis C, respiratory diseases, tuberculosis being obscenely priced. Most of these treatments are patented which implies that their prices cannot be capped or regulated. For the past decades, the government has not been able to come up with a feasible model for negotiating prices of patented and overpriced treatments with MNCs. Thus, pharma leaders feel that India needs a strong and robust public healthcare model where there is a system that can check obscenely priced treatments, making it more affordable and accessible to the millions of Indian people, especially in rural areas. The need to improve on guidelines to check the cost of medical doctors who charge exorbitant prices most often seen chronic therapies when combined with expensive diagnostic tests and above all, the cost of staying in a private hospital. India's rising middle class are victims to such draconian unwritten rules. Pharma leaders also strongly feels that the union government must ensure as quickly as possible the need of a universal healthcare insurance to rescue the agony of Indian rural and middle class often remaining as the silent spectator of living in the world's largest democracy, thinking that real Ache Din will come.